Once we understand what magnetization is, we move ahead to define what magnetic intensity is. Okay, what magnetic intensity is. Now, now let there be a let there be a solenoid. Let there be a solenoid. Let there be a solenoid of length L and number of turns per unit length as <coughs> we never denoted by capital N capital N's are normally absolute terms hmm? so ok carrying a current carrying a current I then then what happens if, if it's an air core solenoid ok the field in the air core of the solenoid equals what? What is the field equal to? B naught is equal to? Mu naught and I. Hmm? Ampere's law. How had we solved it? By Ampere supplying the Ampere's law around the solenoid. Immediately when things come up like this, that background derivation should come in your mind. Can you derive it? Anyone? Hmm? How, how, how much time? 10 seconds? No, no, don't write. At least you, you give me a vague. So it goes like that, and okay, this is my, this is my Amperian loop, and if this length is maybe b, <coughs> then b into n is the number of turns that is enclosed into i is the amount of current that is enclosed into mu. So that becomes equal to, is it not? B n i mu naught into i enclosed and that is equal to what? I am here, there is b dot dl, so b into b. Here it is 90 degree, here it is not present, not present, not present, 90 degree. So only this remains b into b is equal to that, b cancels, I am left with mu naught ni. Huh? 5, 7, at the most 10 seconds, okay? So that is equal to mu naught ni that I know. Now what I do inside this solenoid, I insert some material. Okay. Okay. Inside the solenoid, I insert. We insert. We insert. We insert a some material into the core of the solenoid so as to completely fill it. You understand? So what happens? Let's say this is a solenoid. It was right now, till now, air cored. And what I do, I insert some material inside it. Yeah. And obviously due to, uh, I have not shown you the wires and the 
external connection due to which you are getting a field in there. So, so maybe it has a field B naught. Okay. Now what happens when I insert that material inside? It, it's now fully filled. So if it was a cylindrical cord solenoid, what happens? It is fully filled with a cylinder. Okay. Now suppose due to that, so so this is a vector. Okay. Suppose due to that, I have I have a field that I call BM and mind it this field is not necessarily in the same direction okay I am showing it to be in the same direction but it may be opposite okay it may be opposite also but whatever it is the total field inside the solenoid now becomes the vector sum of B naught and BM Okay, so the total field inside the solenoid equals the sum of the two vectors B naught and BM okay and this field I decide to call B so B is equal to B naught plus BM okay fine Now, now, what happens? This part in I, see what happens? What happens? My field is directly proportional to N I. That means if I increase the number of turns per unit length or I increase I, I'll have more field, correct? This, this thing n i which drives the field I define as magnetic intensity and call it H. Okay. The term n i which sets up the magnetic field in the solenoid is called is called magnetic intensity intensity and is denoted by H. Okay. Okay. Thus, thus, H, oh, sorry, my B naught is equal to mu naught into h okay that is equal to mu naught into h now this this the 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 magnetic field due to the material that will depend on its magnetization no more the magnetization more, more the dipole moment per unit volume more will be the field is it not because after all after all how will bm be created due to the due to the summation of the dipole moments of individual atoms is it not okay 
we know that that bm is directly proportional to m what does it mean it implies that bm is equal to when it goes away what comes in is m is mu not sorry is mu not mu not is the proportionality constant that drops in when the when the when the proportionality sign vanishes we get the point okay now what does the magnetization depend upon <clears throat> the magnetization m is directly proportional to h why why is it directly proportional to h because let us try to understand let us try to understand hold on see what happens is suppose the material already had small dipole moments that means it was it was a it was a polar kind of material as far as magnetized magnetic dipole moments are concerned and you apply so so and they are randomly and they are randomly oriented right and they are randomly oriented now what happens the moment you force a field the moment we force a field what happens these moments have a, these magnetic moments they have a tendency to get aligned with the field torque m cross b as simple as that so higher the b more is the torque and more is the likelihood that they'll align with the field we understand they'll align with the field so that is one or it may be that the that the material is not a polar material it is a non polar one then what it does that you'll understand much clearer in the next chapter what happens the the atoms they'll suddenly react so as to oppose you why do they do that why do they oppose you that is that is law of the nature that is lenz's law that again you'll understand in the next chapter but for now you just understand that they want that the magnetic field should remain whatever it is and they'll they'll try to accelerate or decelerate so as to oppose you okay but and that opposition is also directly proportional to the field that you have applied so in both the cases it is the it is the field and field actually is being driven by 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 mr h by magnetic intensity okay so that's why this magnetization is is directly proportional to h now what happens in certain materials certain materials even a small amount of application of h is able to induce a large amount of m okay so these materials are more sensitive to the application of h and and the technical term is they are more susceptible right in the sense that some of us are more susceptible to cold what does it mean if there is a small amount of cold we'll catch cold right okay or we may be some people are susceptible to dust that means they are very sensitive to dust it is exactly in this literal sense that they have used this here and they call it when i remove this when i remove this proportionality sign i i i get a symbol chi where this chi is called magnetic susceptibility this is chi m right susceptibility quite rightly so so what happens just ju just see here what happens if your chi m is very very high then with a the very small h you are able to generate a very big m 
Mm. So you are susceptible to. That depends on the constant. Yeah, this, that's why it is susceptibility. So higher this constant, it more is. is the material susceptible to the to the application of application of H. It is different for all materials. Yeah, it is different for all materials. Yes. So this M becomes chi M into H. Okay. So now. So, so now what happens? So, so if I start from here, therefore Bm is equal to mu naught into m and m is chi m into h, is it not? And if I wish to apply that vector notation, then it is like that. Now, what does equation 1 become? Rather, I will call it 2. So, this is 1, this is 2. Now, if I put this value, putting 1 and 3 into, right, putting 1 and 3 in 2, we get, what do we get? We get B, we get B is equal to mu naught H plus mu naught chi m h. Why, why am I calling it chi m? Because there is also a thing called electric susceptibility. And what is that? What, that is called polarizability. That is for the electric dipole moments, as simple as that. The, that is the electric analog. Okay? So what happens? This is actually equal to mu naught into 1 plus chi m into h. And this 1 plus chi m, so, so, so let me write it as, as so, so I get B is equal to mu naught into 1 plus chi m into h. And it is this, it is this that I call, call mu r. This I call mu r. And this is, this remains mu naught. And this is h. So, b is also equal to that. Where? where mu r is equal to 1 plus chi m, okay, that is 1 plus chi m and mu r is called relative permeability, relative permeability. See there is a word called permittivity that is reserved for electrostatics, electric fields permittivity permittivity electric fields electric. denoted by epsilon okay if it is epsilon r it is relative permitti per permittivity if it is epsilon not it is absolute permittivity of the vacuum the same thing this is permeability so higher the permeability is that means you are permitting the the say say if it is if it is 10, then what happens? Then compared to the field, you would have got a field of mu naught into H when that material was not there. If a material of permeability mu R comes in, you get a field that is 10 times stronger than what it would have been had there been no material. You understand? Why we went into all this? Because now I understand if I put a particular kind of material, what kind of response it is going to give me. So maybe if I want a higher magnetic field inside certain com components, I know now what material to use. Mu R should be high. So mu R should be high. Fine. So I put it inside the box. Once this is understood, we can now discuss diamagnetic and paramagnetic material. Diamagnetic, paramagnetic and ferromagnetic.